Hello, Animanyan here. And today I've sponsored this tutorial for 100 USD. So thank you so much uh, to Satyam for making this wonderful tutorial on defamations. A reminder that I'm still sponsoring NSFW 3D tutorials and just art tutorials in general. So if you have an idea, please contact me on the Discord below. There is a NSFW Blender Discord in the description. Thank you so much and enjoy. This is yet another deformation tutorial and this tutorial uh, is quite I mean a bit different from the other one in the other one we used mesh transform to transform the body all right and in this we'll use geometry nodes and geometry nodes will have quite a lot of controls and it can be a bit complicated than the other the other is quite autonomous it can work uh, self by self and uh, give a lot of quality and if you don't want like to adjust uh, some parameters on your animation you can use that one and and if you want a uh, more control over the quality and more efficiency then you can use this one so let, let's get started so first th this is the color object again and this will interact with our body All right so I have just added it beforehand so I'll just disable it right now and we'll get started on the body so I'll select the body first and then go to edit mode and in this uh, first uh, we'll select whatever part we want that should be deformed so I'll just select any face I want there and then control plus to select recursively and then I'll subdivide it Alright, subdivide like uh, four times. And uh, since we are using geometry nodes, it will be quite efficient. Alright, so don't worry a lot much about the subdivision. Alright, and after this is done, you will notice that the chain, the object has changed because the shape keys or whatever this object had is now like rendered useless. So you'll have to do the shape keys again. And so right now with this selected, I'll go to uh, data vertex groups and add a new vertex groups called like deform region. All right, this region, uh, this is the reason we'll use for deformation. And uh, I'm setting this because I don't want the deformation to happen anything in outside of it. And after this is assigned, uh, well, most of things is done and now we'll add another uh, vertex group called deform brush all right brush or whatever you want uh, this uh, deform brush uh, this so the data will use this data to uh, deform the object now do not assign this you want to set it to zero all right so i have not assigned so it will be set to zero let's Use the weight pen mode to see it now. I'm using Blender 4.1. All right, so the weight pen displays like this here. I'll just it, using points, so I'll just go select the face mode, and you can see it is zero. All right, and for this, I can directly select the the deform region from this here above top deform region, and this is one. All right, now this is done. I'll go to the the physics modifiers. All right, now. Also, you'll see that this is pixelated or we call it is gone more polygonal. Uh, so, like the other video, you'll just go to deform, smooth corrective, and set repeat to 10. The vertex group will set to deform region. Alright, now only smooth, and now most. Now it looks very good, right? Now this is done, we'll add another modifier called physics and it will be dynamic paint put dynamic paint above the subdivision all right 
and now setting sub setting this dynamic paint will set it to canvas at canvas uh, in this set vertex anti-aliasing frame start one and whatever set it according to your timeline now subset i'm setting subset steps to two you can set it whatever uh, for more quality you can add it more i mean set it to one two whatever or more quality now go to surface and then select weight and dissolve yeah and for collider we'll set here the collider collection whatever uh, object this collider will have will act as the brush all right for colliding now this all timeline i'm setting it to 30 all right and this slow option is on so it will look quite like realistic and now setting this vertex group for uh, now now uh, i want this collision data to be saved on some vertex group and we have created it before so i'll just set it d4 brush all right now this is done we'll just have to add the now set the the brush all right the brush or hand which will collect so i'll select the hand here and go to physics i had already enabled the dynamic pen and collision i'll just delete it again and just a dynamic pen this time the collision doesn't matter all right canvas a dynamic set type 2 brush add brush and done this is all we had to do now we'll have to set up the geometry nodes for this all right so i'll just select the object uh, for which you want to set geometry nodes and the geometry nodes will be the body all right so, so here I, I do not have geometry nodes so i'll add it from here add workspaces general geometry nodes and i'll close this by right clicking and close area now i'll add just geometry node for this all right add new geometry nodes let's call it deform i'll pin it and now the main setup now my frame is set to like 157 i'll set it to zero and be sure to set the geometry nodes just below dynamic paint because we are going to you because uh, the the processing of the data is from top to down right so after dynamic paint is done we are going to use the data from the dynamic paint in the geometry nodes so well with this done uh, uh, let's do next thing all right so set up the geometry nodes so first we'll just take add set position node and set it right here and the next is like position nodes position node we are going to capture positions from the main object and then modify it right to create displacement and now add another attribute called i mean node called named attribute add it here like okay, this and then add vector displace vector math node and set this to subtract and positions will be in top and the attribute will be bottom now we have to set the attribute right this attribute will be deformed brush now connect it to vector and i, I mean this connect connect the vector to the position node now let's see if it's working i'll take it set it to transform addition to global right it was not set so and this you can see that it's working all right it is working for the whole body we don't want to work it for the whole body so that's why we created the the deform region so i'll add another named attribute i'll just copy duplicate it and then change the name to deform region all right now i'll add this named attribute again and do a boolean math now I'm using boolean math because I want to f work only in this one and if you you want you can add more space I mean more areas to the deform region vertex group to deform more regions so I'll just do it here I'll add attribute to this boolean and this and then this is and right so the it will compare both and if 
the same points or position in, present in both then it will set the out output to that all right so i will set this out boolean output to in this selection set position selection and now it is working and we can see that it's not working for any other now and only working for this and now you can see this is quite messy right now to fix this we are going to add a bit more things all right i'll just make space for the them here in the between now i'll add another node called map range to i mean to range what the values are i'm just limiting what the displacement will be right so i'll just use it vector and i'll connect it again vector linear to smooth steps then connect this vector to subtract now uh, we are going to set this to max all right so i'll just decrease it so you can see there's something happening here and now uh, let's check it again now you can see we want this uh, to imprint on the body right and the and the direction of the imprint will be in y axis from here right so i'll just uh, set y to like a bit and set others to zero like i already said now you can see that something actually happened here like i'll show you something actually happened here and it is now displaced right as you can see i'll set it a bit low here it is a bit low, right five or zero point one three let's set it to three now see there's something happened here and this displacement is done and yeah, all right and the displacement will only happen to the region which is touching the main body right so i have the just touching the body and you can see it here like the displacement is done but there's a few thing like here you can see there's a bit of space but the displacement is still happening and we can fix this all right so i'll fix it later right now we are going to do some like settings for this to add con more controls to us so i'll just uh, connect add a new node called combine x y z and then you connect group input to x y and z and then then set this vector to 2 max for this and now if we click the body you can see that these values are present here so i'll set the y value to here 0 0.03 all right now uh, since one now if we increase the size you can see that displacement is very i mean a lot of displacement and i want to limit it all right and it's actually limited to one only or not right now yeah two max is set to like whatever if we fix the value so this will be max one let's add it let's change the name so it's understandable so this is max y max z all right so let's set max y to 0 0.03 or whatever let's set it to 4 this will be the max displacement and 3 will be good enough i guess all right now this now let's fix this displacement thing not this distance it's displacing in some distance right here you can see so for this i'm going to use uh, again math i mean vector math and add it here and now i'm going to duplicate this combine y xyz and then again add it here like this then set this vector to here and when i like decrease the value of y you can see here i mean it is it must be set to minus all right minus like 0 0.01 so it's much more closer to it and all right so 0 0.02 something like this so it's more closer and if i increase the size weight you can see that that this displacement is happening you can set the 
max displacement to like here by one more so it's better all right you will choose whatever value you want this, this displacement is working perfectly now this is the main tutorial we have covered everything i mean i have covered everything and now for more thing we can see that this displacement is like only happening in y axis and let's see if i select this and pose it like bend it a bit more and then try to place this hand on the top like here this displacement will only happen in the y axis and not the z axis all right and and if you want to set a z axis a bit more you can set the the max z from this this one modifier max z to 0 0.01 or something so it will add a bit more depth and you can actually like keyframe it all right so it's good enough now we don't want any attribute for it so i'll just uh, toggle single attribute and yeah also you can set the max value here minus one to one or whatever so that you don't actually change it by a lot plus you can also add drivers to do your job for you all right so like so to increase the max z or max value depending on whatever variable you want like hand if it is too deep then you can increase the max z size and z offset size all right something like this so it's good enough all right so this is it for the tutorial and yeah do whatever with it yeah you can also if you use this tutorial please i mean tag me it will be much like i'll appreciate it if you tag me and this is my like twitter handle right let me write it here x dot com slash hostel malul all right you can tag me all right so this is for the tutorial and i'll try i'll share it with i'll share this file with you all right and yeah you can see if you try to see like if this z value is set here then it will also create this displacement like here in the below so be sure to set it to zero or a very low value all right never set it to negative value or it will go top and yeah you can adjust this however however you want to play with your character all right now you cannot use mirror modifier or whatever with this but it's good enough because you can just select the object and just select whatever region you want subdivide it and after subdividing um, you can either make a deform another deform region or just add the add those vertices to this deform deform region and for selection of different collider object you can just add more collect add another dynamic pen to one modifier or just add the collections here all right in this brush collection and then use these boolean operators to 
to your job and you can also add multiple geometry nodes to give you more control all right so this is it and yeah if you don't want this region i mean any like the collider or hand to control it you can just remove this named attribute on another so that it won't affect because in this dynamic point you can see that we can only add one collection not a lot and also the dynamic paint is only like you can apply it only once and not more so you can use this boolean operator to add more on different geometry nodes or add different conditions but yeah you'll have to run like geometry nodes for it so yeah this is good just tag me in in your twitter or whatever animation you make and do follow me This is a tutorial for making deformations on body. For this, we will use the property, the physics property, mesh deform, to deform any part of the body and and imprint whatever shape you want on it. And then this body will convert back to the original original mesh in a bit or in a certain time frame. So let's get started. For this, we'll have to create a cage for whatever object. So for using mesh deform and this cage have to be as precise as possible like it just it barely has to cover cover the area and also maintain the shape of the body for very precise control so here in this video we are going to like create a cage for this butt here so i'll let's start it let's get started so uh, right now i've selected the object then I'll go to edit mode and I'm going to go to edit mode and face select select the butt here all right like this a bit and I'm right now I'm selecting this much area but when you make it try to select a bit more like here right and now this is done for creating very pre precise like depths or whatever deformations we'll have to subdivide this area so i'll just subdivide it once and after subdivision is done you'll see that all the face key face key and whatever that was previously done on this object is removed well that is because there's more subdivision and you'll have to do the shape case again over and again all right so this much this is now subdivided there's a more depth for deformation but uh, this won't do, we'll have to subdivide it one or two more times. And don't worry, it won't do a lot. I mean, it won't affect the efficiency a lot because it is barely adding like like a minimum like 4000 polygons extra. And for your PC to lag, it has the whole scene The I mean, for your PC to lag, your whole scene have to contain a minimum of like 1 million, right? So this much like 4000 won't do a lot. And now this is done, we'll go, go to like the vertex group, add a vertex group called like say, but R touch. Now assign uh, one weight, I mean, all right now this is done let's now go to the main ob edit mode and then shift d to duplicate the object and then split it using y or this or then separate it using selection now this is done we'll see something like this all right so whenever we separate the object uh, it is locked by default so 
go to the items and transform and unlock all of it now and now go to the scene collection and remove the the this separated mesh from the parent and let's place it in the scene collection all right now this is placed now let's uh, re like disable it right now and now you can see that the main mesh is deformed a bit now to solve this problem of deformation what i'm going to do is go to modifiers add modifier uh, generate uh, no i mean deform deform the smooth corrective and place smooth corrective above the mass all right now we are going to select the but but our touch vertex group factor to 1 repeat to like 10 scale 0 only smooth now this is here is done and this is good enough all right now select the smooth whatever to simple now this is done this part is done now this actually won't affect much from when you render it but it's right now visible in the object don't worry about it now this is done now let's go to our main main like the cage one and i'll disable this model here now that we are done with it i'll select we have to remove all the properties from this object so i'll just select, select the object and all i'll delete all the modifiers and everything i'll delete everything Del delete all groups delete all shape keys etc delete all materials remove unused laws and all now this is done there are also the properties we have to delete like uh, also set the origin to geometry clear snap like relation parent clear parent object rigid body clear rigid body if there is any and clear keyframes remove animation track clear tracks constraints clear object constraints constraint clear constraint all right this is done parent clear parent etc just clear everything all right now after we're done with this we we are good to go yeah i believe everything is done now good to go i'll just go to edit mode and select the edges using the edge select and yes i'll now using alt you can only select one of the edges so i'll go to select and select loops edge loops or edge ring whatever no, this won't do i'll just use alt and shift to select everything all the edges this is done now i'll extrude it in y direction and now i'll use i'll click right click loop tools and flatten it now loop tools you can find loop tools from here loop tools if you search it you will find it here now this done then let's just correct the this a bit here from the x direction here now let's fill it using f now this is done this part is done all right so the main part is done now we'll just have to line this with our fara model like his this here now one thing is that you you have to align it again with the uh, edit mode because we have cleared all the shape keys so it's a bit out of shape right now and yeah from here to here is like here to here is the depth of is the depth so this depth will be important for us well you can decrease a bit like here or here but 
keep the depth a bit do not solidify it like that okay now this done I'll remove the annotations and like here and now we'll just convert it to wireframe using the this object viewport display texture to wire now this done we have to align it properly now all right here i'll just increase this size a bit with the scale items scale 1.01 .01. this much will be sufficient and align it in the y axis i'll try to keep the above part and below part like to maintain and i'll inflate the middle part because this will this one will be easier to edit and i'll go to edit mode edit select uh, vertices and toggle x-ray and then i'll select uh, some like some part in the body and toggle the x-ray off and then extrude it using uh, like extrude it using g or edited now turn on professional edit use from here or you can use the con the shortcut key O now G Y and just bear just edit it or transform it barely all right this much is not good a bit more this is good enough Well, as long as you can see it from different angles, it is good enough. All right, we have to do make it as close as possible. well this much is good enough i guess yeah this much is good enough and here and and here are a bit of flipping this much is good enough so now this part is also done now let's save it and now let's uh append like move con add constraint to this so that this will move along with our object i mean the original body so now i'll select this object and then select the rig control p parent parent with empty groups now this done i'll select this object again go to constraint add object constraint child of target will be our rig now we have to parent it to a bone right so the bone i'll use is this bone right here and to know the name of this bone i'll just go to pose mode and then i'll select this bone after this bone is selected i'll go to bone properties on the right bone and here's the name which is hip right so i'll go to object mode again select this object and go to add constraint this will be oh hip set inverse now i'll just look at it check it if it's working now I'll select this hip again and when I move it you can see that this is moving now there's a bit of incons inconsistency but 
you can fix it yourself i'm not going to tell you it will just increase increase uh, i mean increase the size and now this done we are good now let's save it now comes the main part this is where we will add the effect which will create it so what we'll do is simply use weight mode like weight printing kind of thing where if the object or whatever the collider object is if if it touches this whatever but and then it will make displacement according to the normals of the faces all right so uh, let's name it but our touch now this is done and now go to modifier no not modifier it's physics now this thing which i'm going to tell you can also be done using geometry nodes and it will be much more efficient and we won't have to use cage but whatever let's use it right now using physics because a geometry implementation will be quite hard but it can be done so i'll use dynamic paint uh dynamic paint type will be canvas add canvas you can add multiple surfaces here so right now we are just going to use one surface for right and this will be frame start frame and do you have to set it correctly all right now the surface surface will be way displays surface now max displacement max displacement is the max depth your object can get i mean the mesh deform will happen and displace factor displace factor will be the maximum i mean the multiplicative factor of of the displacement all right so set it to 2 and the max displace will be 0 0.6 now brush collection brush collection now for this i mean what the object collide will be this will be the brush so here i have a collider object will which will be hand and it is in collection collider so i'll just go to this but again and add brush collection collider this done now turn on the dissolve and the time frame will be 30 seconds my i mean 30 frames all right now everything is done do not turn this incremental on and after animating you can bake this cache too all right this done now uh, we'll go to select this uh, armature of the collider object and and uh, physics of it now i have already added the physics for it so let's just delete it or uh, so let's add dynamic paint again and this time it will be brush now this brush will affect this can this canvas right like how we use paint paint to color the canvas and brush will be our medium so we'll use this hand as a medium and this will be the canvas the media all right so select the object brush type brush add brush set it to mesh volume now this part is done it is paint do not turn on erase paint it is it will do, do the reverse and absolute alpha turn this on and now this done we are almost done so let's let's try to use it if it's actually happening let's turn on the for, for off for night now on here at timeline 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 is to z one and just use it and one more thing is that you have to like use the object or whatever the collider must only be on the surface must always touch the surface otherwise it won't work if it goes from here to the depth uh, it, everything will be reset all right so let's see it in action i'll just turn this into wire to solid for right now to for you to look and you can see here right here let me disable this end so you can see it's actually quite precise all right now this depth will be handled from here 
we'll select this but our touch modifier and Felix tab and this 2.6 will be the max displacement see right now this value is actually in meters so let's so if you want to like where did it go yeah here yeah. is actually in meters so this won't affect one cent this will be one centimeter this will be one millimeter like this all right so we'll just use like 0 0.2 or 3 30 centimeters well it is a lot but whatever and this will be the displacement factor like here it will actually add the force to the displacement here now one is good but you can increase to to increase force or whatever i'm just going to use two and well this also depends on the hand how deeply the hand is engraved so you just use two or whatever value you want let's use 1.5 1.5 here it's totally depending on you like here like this is done now the main part now comes the main part that is to add the cage now let's save it now I'll just turn on the fera now now let's save it again now comes the very important part the append appending it to the object now uh, the we're using appending you append what the fuck we'll append using add modifier deform mesh deform mesh deform will keep it above before the corrective smooth uh, before the corrective smooth or subsurface whatever you have and after the armature all right so using this now object select object will be our butt but our touch and vertex group will be but our touch again and turn on dynamics if you are using other modifiers too like other physics modifier but right now i'm not using any so i'll just turn this on and now let's save it now as if you had added any physics with other other cage objects you might know that it takes quite a lot of time to do it all right so so we have we should save it so that if our computer crashes it will be the object will be saved so just save it and then go select the solid the object now the for me i'm using i5 11 gen and it takes around 15 seconds for it to happen and it might be depending on pc to pc i have 16 gb ram and it fills ram a bit so i'll close any other objects any other applications if it's running and then do it so i'm not using any objects so i'll just do, do it right now i'll just press bind and it will take around 15 seconds for it to happen now blender is a python application all right so it is slow in it is slow in cpu processing and you can see i have i 11 gen and it is a six core 12 logical processor means 12 threads all right so in the fourth thread you can see this is happening so as long as the whatever thread the blender is using is running it won't hang now all right now the this windows is done the cage is deformed now let's see it in action i'll just turn the viewport to again to wire and then disable the viewport render now let's see using the hand see it is actually working and like here Here you can see that it is working. Now I'm use I'm just increasing the depth a bit because since there was a bit difference between uh, difference between the whatever the cage. I mean there's a bit of distance, right? So that's why it not it's not actually 
doing the thing right now properly so i'll just go to here d select this go to physics physics and increase the displacement factor to two something like this and turn it off so you can see that the displacement is happening and it's it can be it can be said to be a bit good but as you can see it is not that good right now because there's a bit of distance but if you can manage to precisely do it it will look very good all right So this is it for the tutorial. This is the displacement that's happening right now, but the displacement is seen much better in in this one. Like here. All right. So this is it for the tutorial. See the displacement is very good, right? This is it for the tutorial.